So Joe Biden, a much different tone than what we've heard from President Trump in terms of how to tackle this pandemic and what's ahead of us in this pandemic. Uh, for his first 100 days, he announced that he's going to ask everybody, everyone out there, to wear a mask. He hopes to get 100 million vaccinated or shots into the arms of Americans in that first 100 days. He also hopes to reopen the majority of schools in this country in the first 100 days. I, I just first want to get Get your reaction to what we just saw. Well, Katie, it is so gratifying to hear uh, from the president-elect and the vice president-elect uh, their understanding that we have got to rely on science, that we need national guidelines, that we need national leadership. And what a contrast that is to the current president uh, who continues to diminish the work of scientists, who does not uh, wear a mask on many occasions, doesn't believe in social distancing. And I also want to congratulate the vice president, uh, the president-elect uh, and, and the vice president-elect for assembling, a, in fact, a world-class team of people who are going to lead us out of this horrific uh, public health uh, disaster. So I really congratulate them for doing some really good work. Let's talk about the other disaster, and that's the economic disaster right. that's facing, that millions of, millions of Americans are facing right now. There is a bipartisan deal that is being worked on in the Senate um, and has some Democratic support among leadership. Uh, that's about $900 billion, not quite what the Democrats had wanted. You are not a fan of it because it does not include direct stimulus payments to individuals. What are you doing right now? Who are you teaming up with to perhaps introduce an amendment or, or push for including that in this stimulus, in these stimulus talks? Well, for a start, uh, we are working really, really hard. Uh, a letter just went out uh, with the signatures of five Democrats, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Ron Wyden, Ed Markey, uh, Jeff Merkley are urging our colleagues in the Democratic caucus to stand firm. And as you've indicated, uh, what we are looking today at is not only a public health disaster in terms of COVID-19, uh, we are looking at the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. I mean, we're talking about tens of millions of people uh, who are either unemployed, they're working at starvation wage jobs, they have no health insurance, they're worried about being uh, evicted. There are, we are seeing hunger at a higher level in America uh, than we have in, in many decades. So to me, it is kind of a no-brainer that we have got to do what we did in the original CARES Act and say to every working class family in America, uh, families, couples of 150,000 or less, individuals 75,000 or less, that we are going to provide a $1,200 direct payment plus 500 bucks uh, for the children. This is what working families in this country right now desperately need, uh, and it will be a stimulus for getting our economy uh, back on its feet. You have some unlikely allies in this. Peter Navarro also supports direct stimulus That's right. payments. Uh, Republican Senator Josh Hawley supports direct mm -hmm, stimulus mm -hmm. payments. The president has expressed some support for direct stimulus payments. Are you going to work with uh, Josh Hawley to maybe introduce a bipartisan amendment? We're going to work with anybody and everybody uh, that we can. And you're right. Uh, Peter Navarro has been clear on it, and he's right. The president has given, you know, it's always hard to keep track of what the president says or does, but he has indicated support for a, a $1,200 payment. It's what the American people want and know that we desperately need. Look, if government means anything at all, if we're going to restore faith in government today, and God knows that so many people have kind of given up on their own government. It's at a moment like this when there is so much desperation out there. This is a time when government has got to say, yeah, we hear your pain. We're going to respond. We're going to get you back on your feet. So I've been talking to some economists about this bill and about your opposition toward not having direct stimulus. And they agree a direct stimulus would be a benefit. But they also say... Don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. No. Democrats have also said that the reason that they agreed to this is because Joe Biden is coming in. He's going to be president. They see it as the start of negotiations, a down payment for the future. Would you vote yes for this bill as it stands if that was the only option? 
No, I would not. But I, I, I think the point also to understand, Katie, as you know, uh, in the past, not so many months ago, Democrats were fighting for a $3 trillion bill, a $2 trillion bill. There was an, a, an agreement with Mnuchin of the Trump administration for $1.8 trillion. And now when you're talking about new money, this is not really a $908 billion bill. Uh, over $500 billion of that money is quote-unquote old money that wasn't, wasn't used in the Kazakh. So you're talking about $350 billion of new money which is like 10 percent of what the Democrats previously had demanded. So I think what we have got to do is do what the American people want. We've got to bring the American people into this debate. And what the American people want is that in this terrible economic moment, they need some help to feed their kids, to pay the rent. And we have got to respond to that pain. I totally understand that there are millions of Americans hurting, but they'll be hurting more if they get nothing before but the, the inauguration. But Katie, if, if the these alternative programs, is if it, this money expires. Yeah, it's I, I understand that. But the issue should not be, oh, it's, it's this or nothing. The issue should be how come the Republicans are not willing to reach out and help the American people. Our job right now is to fight, to demand, to demand that uh, that direct payment of 1200 bucks is in the package. That's what I want to do. Let me ask you a little bit about the cabinet. Um, retired General Lloyd Austin is apparently going to be Joe Biden's pick for defense secretary. He is going to need a waiver if he is going to serve in that position. Jim Mattis got a waiver to serve in the position for the Trump administration. Would you vote to give him that waiver? Well, I really I've been kind of focused on the direct payment issue, been working really hard on that. And I really haven't focused uh, on the, the issue of the waiver for Austin. But my inclination is that I would uh, support that. Does it make you uneasy? There are groups out there, including veterans groups, that say, hey, listen, this really should be a civilian in this position. It, it should be a civilian running the Pentagon. Yes, it does. But on the other hand, uh, it is the uh, president of the United States who makes these nominations. And I presume that uh, Biden and his team have uh, thought long and hard on this. How do you feel about the cabinet so far? Um, do you feel like there's been enough progressive representation in Joe Biden's cabinet picks? Well, as I have said many times, um, the progressive movement in this country uh, is a very significant part of the Democratic coalition. Now, I know some of the folks in the Democratic establishment don't want to recognize it, but that is a fact. Uh, and in truth, if it wasn't for the hard work of a lot of progressive grassroots organizations who got young people involved in the political process, working class people involved in a way that we have not seen, uh, Joe Biden would not have won that election. And I think uh, that's pretty clear. And uh, my point has been from day one, uh, that uh, those voices, that movement, uh, deserves representation uh, in the cabinet. Uh, and if your question is, have I seen that yet? Uh, no, I have not. I've seen some good appointments, uh, people that I like. I think people who are really, really smart, experienced. Uh, but I have not seen uh, people from the progressive movement, per se, uh, in that cabinet. Are you holding out hope for any position specific cabinet yeah. position to get a progressive voice? Yeah, it's not a position. It is a question, should the progressive movement in this country, in which tens of millions, many millions, I shouldn't say tens of millions, but many, many millions of people, that a movement that constitutes 35, 40 percent of the Democratic Party, should that movement be represented in one capacity or, or more than one capacity or not? The answer is absolutely yes. Bernie Sanders, we're up against the wall, but I have a thousand more questions for you. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time, Senator. Um, and good luck out there. Stay safe. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.